welcome to the second episode of One Minute Games. This time we'll create a drifting taxi. First we need some graphics. For the floor all we need is a cube, move down and scale to 20 units in X and Z. Then let's create a car. Start with the block for a base. Add two smaller blocks on top for the window and the roof. The car of course needs some wheels. We will use a cylinder. Rotate and scale it, then color it in darker tones. Duplicate it three times. The drivers need to see where they're going, so let's add some lights. Use white emissive material in front and red at the back. To top it off, we'll add the famous taxi sign on the roof. To write the logic, we need a new script file and attach it to the parent. Let's begin with making it move forward. Instead of moving the car directly, we will create a separate vector and call it move force and change its value over time. That way the car continues to keep moving even when the key is not pressed. We will stop it with friction later. Let's increase the move force vector in forward direction of the car. We will control the amount by up and down key arrows and a new move speed variable. At the end we need the delta time to keep frame drops into account. We can see the car move, but it never stops. To fix that, let's add friction and limit the speed. To implement drag, we simply multiply the move vector by less than 1, making it ever so smaller each frame, slowly reaching 0. For speed limit, we can use a built-in method called clamp magnitude. It ensures the length of a vector doesn't go above a certain value, it clamps vectors' length. The max length is provided as a second parameter, max speed in our case. Now the car slowly stops. It also won't go above certain speed. We're still missing steering. We'll control steering with left and right arrow keys. It's a value between minus 1 and 1. With that value, we will rotate the whole car around up axis. To only rotate it when the car is moving, let's multiply the rotation by the length of the move vector. It will be zero when the car is standing still, and so will be the rotation. At the end, multiply everything by the new variable steer angle to have a control over the amount of steering, and of course, the delta time. We now have a fully functioning drifting taxi, although it slides around like an ice. To improve that, we'll add traction in step 4. If we draw the move vector as white line, we can see that the car keeps sliding in the same direction sideways. What we want is to bring that move direction closer to the forward direction over time, towards the blue line. To achieve that, there is a very useful built-in method called LERP that will help us. LERP stands for Linear Interpolation, and what it does is, it takes two vectors and returns a new vector between them, depending on the third parameter, which is a number between 0 and 1. So each frame we will take a move direction, but not slightly closer to the forward direction, and use that as a new move direction. Now the drift direction slowly corrects itself. If we then increase traction, we can see the white vector is much closer to the blue one and the car doesn't drift as much. Otherwise, if the traction is small, the car feels like it's on ice again. There is only one thing left to do. No drifting game is complete without the skid marks. Under the rear tire, create a new trail which can be found under the effects. Let's tweak the width and change the color. Make it black and fade to transparent on one end. For the other trail, we can just duplicate it and move it to the other rear tire. Zero out its local position so it sits directly under its new parent. And that's it, we are done. Good job! Now we can have some fun drifting around, imagining how it would be like 
if Cam Block would be a taxi driver. Now it's your turn to show creativity and practice what you've learned. Here are some ideas how to improve the game. Decorate your scene with some city objects or in some other theme. Add some boxes lying around and add a rigid body to the car to enable hitting them. And remember to disable gravity. Add ice floor sections and use recasting to detect whether the car is driving over gravel or ice. Change traction value based on that. Bonus hint, the car can also be a shopping cart, baby stroller or a land mower like this. That is all for this episode. Share your version on social media of this channel and see what others have made. Also check out Patreon for bonus content. If you really enjoyed the video and learned something new, like and subscribe and share it with friends. Have a nice day and see you next time.